film begins with a short explanation that chess can be seen as harsh because the chess pieces represent people indirectly trying to harm each other. Soon after, the scene shifts by introducing a man named Abe, who's playing chess. Turns out, Abe is a powerful gangster in the East. On the other side of the chessboard is Frankie, another tough gangster who rules the West. Both of them are known for being ruthless and hard to control. One morning, Abe gets woken up by his daughter. It turns out Abe has a loving family, and they seem really happy together. He doesn't show any signs of being a gangster boss when he's at home. After getting ready, Abe has breakfast and makes coffee for himself. He tells his wife that his coffee is really tasty, and everyone would enjoy it. His wife playfully jokes that it tastes like store-bought instant coffee. Meanwhile, their daughter asks if she and her mom can spend the night at her grandmother's house, and Abe agrees as long as she doesn't forget to do her homework. Soon after, Abe leaves the house because his personal driver is waiting for him. While he's gone, his wife discovers his bipolar medication that he must have accidentally left behind. Then, while outside, Abe is waiting for his private driver named Benjamin. There, he gives Benjamin a cup of coffee that he made himself. After trying the coffee, he eagerly asks Benjamin how it tastes. Benjamin responds that the coffee is really good, which makes Abe happy. However, as they are about to leave, Benjamin playfully adds that it's almost as good as instant coffee. Meanwhile, a police car is seen observing them from a distance. As Abe and Benjamin start their journey, they notice the police following them, as usual. After a while, he instructs Benjamin to shake off the police, and Benjamin agrees. When they stuck in the traffic light, Benjamin quickly takes a different route, causing the police to lose track of them. After this, Abe tells Benjamin that he has a meeting scheduled for tonight with Frankie, the gangster boss from the Western region. Abe is annoyed with Frankie because he's been causing trouble in Abe's territory in the East. Abe also contacts a man named Richard, who usually helps his group with money laundering. However, for some reason, Richard doesn't answer the calls, even though Abe had recently given him money. Frustrated by this, he plans to take some action against Richard. After that, Abe met with his trusted right-hand person, who had a white beard, to give him a letter with information about Richard. There, he told his right-hand person to deliver the letter to apartment number 23 at exactly 3 p.m. 30 minutes later, there's a man named Kane practicing boxing. Kane is known for being a tough and merciless person, especially when he's dealing with his targets. After finishing his training, Kane headed home to his apartment, but before that, he stopped by a convenience store to buy some drinks. While Kane was about to pay the cashier, he noticed two intimidating guys staring at him. In response, Kane imagined himself taking down those two guys, but in reality, he was trying to keep his cool because he had noticed two police officers entering the store. Long story short, Kane eventually arrived at his apartment building. There was a neighbor in the building who seemed like he wanted to challenge Kane, but because there was a woman present, he decided not to engage in any conflict. Once he got inside his apartment, Kane quickly packed his things and then rushed to take a shower. Meanwhile, Abe's trusted right-hand person, who had been instructed by him to deliver the letter, promptly went to Kane's apartment and slipped the letter under the door at exactly 3 in the afternoon. On the other hand, Kane, who had just finished taking a shower, grabbed the letter and relaxed while watching the news. The news was reporting about a brutal killing that had taken place, and it turned out that Kane was the one responsible for taking down some gangsters the previous night. Afterward, he opened the letter, which contained information and photos of Richard. At that moment, Kane realized that he needed to eliminate Richard right away. Now, let's switch to Richard, who was with his pregnant wife. At that time, he received a call from an unknown number, and he suspected it was Abe. So, he declined the call. Richard then decided to take a shower because he had an important meeting with a client coming up. On the other hand, Richard's wife, who was cooking, accidentally heard a message notification from his phone. Then, she checked it and discovered that Richard had an appointment with another woman, which meant he wouldn't be meeting with a client as he had claimed. Shortly after, Richard came clean and told his wife not to wait for him to return home because he had a late-night meeting with a client. Soon after, Richard was on his way, and it turned out his wife was secretly following him. 
At the same time, Kane was also secretly following Richard's car. Inside the car, Richard was talking to a woman he was planning to meet, and their conversation was quite close. There she mentioned that she didn't really like Richard's wife because she was pregnant. Richard tried to reassure her, saying that there was no way their relationship would be discovered. Meanwhile, Richard's wife was trying to call her younger sister, Kelly, but she was always busy. After several attempts, Kelly finally answered the phone. There, Richard's wife told her that her husband was going to meet another woman, and she was very upset because she was pregnant. Upon hearing that, Kelly advised her to be patient, and then contacted Richard because it turned out that the woman he was going to meet was actually his own sister. At that time, Kelly asked Richard not to meet her that night, so he decided to head to a basement. At the same time, Kane continued to follow him. Then, when they arrived at a parking lot, Kane suddenly pulled out a gun and approached Richard. When he shot, Kane missed that. Unfortunately, the stray bullet hit Richard's wife, shocking Kane. After that, he quickly left the scene. On his way, Kane got off his motorbike and called Abe's wife to find out where Abe was. Soon after, the scene shifts back to Abe. At that time, he was taken by Benjamin to a hidden bar. Inside the bar, Abe was going to have a meeting with Frankie, the gangster boss from the West. After a while, Frankie arrived at the bar with his younger brother. There, Abe extended his hand to shake with Frankie, but he refused. At that time, Frankie's younger brother tried to insult Abe using Greek so that Abe wouldn't understand, but turns out Abe actually understood what he was saying. Shortly after, they all took their seats and Abe immediately asked Frankie why he kept causing trouble in the eastern region, which clearly belonged to Abe. There, Frankie didn't want to answer and instead suggested they play chess first. In the end, Abe agreed to play chess with Frankie before discussing anything further. As they were about to start the game, Frankie asked what they should wager on it. Since Abe didn't respond, Frankie suggested that if he won, the eastern region would officially become his territory. But if he lost, he would give Abe some money. Hearing Frankie's words were basically challenging Abe's authority. In response, Abe finally said that the bet for this chess game would be his life. If one of them lost, they would be killed right away. In the beginning, Frankie thought Abe was just joking, but Abe was dead serious about the bet. At that time, Frankie didn't want to risk his life over a chess game, so he and his younger brother tried to leave, but Abe's right-hand person and one of his crew members blocked their way. Then Frankie warned Abe not to do anything foolish because he had sent his men to visit Abe's family. Frankie said that with one phone call, his men could harm Abe's family, but Abe remained calm and even dared Frankie to contact his men right away. Feeling challenged, Frankie called his men to go to Abe's house. However, when Frankie's men entered the house, they found out that Abe's family wasn't there. Instead, they discovered a box. When they opened it, there was a sudden explosion. It turned out that Abe had planned this since morning and had hidden a bomb. Now, whether he liked it or not, Frankie had to play chess with Abe, and if he lost, he would face the consequence of being killed on the spot. Soon after, the two of them went on to play chess. At that moment, Frankie was very upset because he didn't expect the situation to turn out like this. During the game, Abe suddenly felt anxious because he realized he had left his medication at home in the morning. It was the time he should have taken his pill. After Abe forgot to take his pills, he started to lose control of himself. Eventually, he lost the chess game to Frankie, who then began to intimidate Abe because he had won. In his agitated state, Abe killed Frankie's younger brother right in front of Frankie. After this, Abe began to speak incoherently and cursed at everyone around. He then turned to his right-hand person and asked how many people they had killed. However, his right-hand person couldn't give the right answer because there were too many. In his out-of-control state, Abe suddenly killed his right-hand person and the others who were present. At that time, Benjamin realized that Abe had lost control because he hadn't taken his medication. At the same moment, Kane appeared and quickly aimed his gun at Frankie. Without any hesitation, he shot and killed Frankie. Then he invited Benjamin to have a drink, stating that the people there deserved their fate. Next, Kane offered a gun to Benjamin, but when Benjamin refused, 
Cain pointed the gun at him, saying he would shoot Benjamin on the count of three. If Benjamin didn't shoot first, he would meet the same fate as the others. Here it became clear that the brutal figure Cain was actually Abe. Turns out, Abe had a dual personality, where he could be the calm Abe or the ruthless Cain. However, since Abe wasn't taking his medication, he couldn't control Cain anymore. Eventually, Benjamin was forced to shoot Abe, also known as Cain, when the countdown reached two. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is don't forget to take your medicine or you'll end up crazy like Abe.